actions without needing human intervention, such as sensing, targeting, weapons adjustments and sensor payload movements, ranges and capabilities, he added. Developments with artificial intelligence, AI, will better enable unmanned platforms to organize, interpret and integrate functions independently such as ISR filtering, sensor manipulation, maneuvering, navigation and targeting adjustments. In essence, emerging computer technology will better enable drones to make more decisions and perform more functions by themselves. The beginning of this phenomenon is evidenced in the computers and sensor technologies of the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, the aircraft uses a technique known as sensor fusion wherein information from multiple sensors is organized, interpreted and presented to pilots on a single screen. Digital Mapping ISR information from the F-35's distributed aperture system and targeting data from its electro-optical targeting system are not dispersed across multiple screens which pilots try to view simultaneously. Fast evolving sensor technology, which allows for an ability to more closely view targets and tactically relevant information from increasingly farther distances, will continue to enable and improve this trending phenomenon. One of the largest consequences of AI will likely lead to a scenario wherein multiple humans will no longer need to control a single drone, rather multiple drones will be controlled by a single human performing command and control functions. People will function as air traffic controllers rather than pilots, using smart, independent platforms. A person does command and can, and platform-oriented autonomous systems will function like a wingman, for instance, that might be carrying extra weapons, helping to defend or performing ISR tasks, Zacharias said. We will get beyond simple guidance and control and will get into tactics and execution. Drones could lead the way into higher risk areas in order to reduce risks for manned aircraft, test and challenge next generation enemy air defenses and greatly increase the ISR and weapons ability of any given mission. In addition, drones will become more capable of air-to-air -air maneuvers and attacks and no longer be primarily engineered for air-to-ground attacks. In fact, early conceptual renderings of sixth-generation fighter jets and the Air Forces in development long-range strike bomber are being engineered for unmanned flight as well as piloted flight. Nevertheless, although drones and unmanned fighters will rapidly become faster and more maneuverable, algorithms may not soon progress to the point where unmanned systems can respond or react to unanticipated developments in a dynamic, fast-changing environment the way a human brain could. At the same time, advances in long-range sensor technology will continue to enable aircraft to see enemies at much longer distances, massively decreasing the need for drones or unmanned systems to be able to dogfight in midair. During the last decade and a half of ground wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, where U.S. forces experienced uncontested air superiority, Drones were used almost exclusively for air-to-ground attacks against insurgent fighters on the run, compounds, weapons caches, bunkers and other strategically vital targets. As the Air Force looks to the future, it aims to be capable of using drones as a key part of successfully engaging near-peer competitors and potential adversaries with technological ability able to rival the U.S. edge. Russia and China, for example, both operate fifth-generation stealth fighters, the latest and greatest technology, and Russia is known to operate some of the most sophisticated enemy air defenses in the world. Russian-built air defenses, such as the S-300 and S-400, are now better networked to one another, of faster processing speeds and are able to detect fighter aircraft on a wider range of frequencies, making it much more difficult for even stealthy fighters and bombers to operate. These potential scenarios, now being studied by Pentagon analysts, involve developing an ability to operate in what is called a contested environment, where enemies operate advanced air defenses, fifth-generation fighter jets and long-range precision-guided weapons. You need to increasingly be able to react more to your environment in the air, addressing unanticipated failures and threats coming after you, Zacharias added. 
Zacharias explained that many of these developments will come to fruition more fully through ongoing training, simulations and live virtual constructions designed to assess various expected scenarios. Faster computer processing power will also better enable an ability to organize and streamline the massive amount of collected ISR data. If a drone loiters over strategically important areas for hours upon hours, computer algorithms will increasingly allow the platform to identify important tactical information by itself. Right now we are using lots of bandwidth to send our real-time video. One of the things that we have is smarter onboard processors. An RPA, drone, can orbit around a given target and have it look, for instance, for a relevant white pickup truck, instead of having human operators do that, he said. This requires image processing, pattern recognition. Then you could just send a signal instead of using up all this bandwidth saying hey I just saw something 30 seconds ago you might want to take a look at the video feed which I am sending right now. The ability for a single human to control multiple drones could bring a number of implications, such as an ability to effectively use a swarm of small drones. Air Force scientists have explained that emerging algorithms are increasingly able to allow large numbers of small, mini drones to operate in unison without hitting one another. For instance, they could collectively work to jam or overwhelm an enemy radar system, act themselves as weapons or munitions or cover an expansive area with ISR video feeds. A wide arsenal of weapons will also be integrated onto drone platforms, including high-tech guided weapons able to discern and destroy enemy targets by themselves to a much greater degree. This will likely include laser weapons as well, Zacharias added. These weapons will naturally include laser-guided AGM-114 Hellfire missiles which are the primary weapon used by today's platforms such as the Predator, Reaper and Army Grey Eagle. At the same time, drones or unmanned platforms are expected to fire a wider range of guided air-dropped munitions and air-to-air -air weapons such as the AIM-9 Sidewinder, AIM-120 AMRAM. Also, the Air Force is now developing an airdrop guided weapon called the Small Diameter Bomb 2. This weapon uses an emerging technology called a Tri-Mode Seeker, which draws upon infrared, laser and millimeter wave radar technology to detect, track and destroy targets in any kind of weather environment. At the same time, Pentagon doctrine stipulates that a human needs to be in the loop when it comes to the possible use of lethal force except potentially in some rare circumstance where immediate defensive weapons are needing in milliseconds due to an incoming attack, Zacharias explained. As a result, nearly all weapons will help distinguish, track and destroy targets under the guidance and supervision of human command and control. Given the pace of technological change, future designed to become 
began heating back up last year, with Lockheed Martin, Boeing, General Atomics, and Northrop Grumman itself all invited to participate. In October, the Pentagon awarded risk reduction contracts to all four companies to refine their product offerings. Now, ten months later, Northrop has revealed what it will be offering the Navy, and surprise, surprise, it's the X-47B. Northrop's X-47B doesn't look exactly like it did when last we saw it. As you can see in the photo above, Northrop originally designed the X-47B to be a low-profile aircraft, a radar evading, stealthy warbird capable of undertaking surveillance and strike missions sans pilots. But in a controversial decision, the Navy has opted to downplay stealth characteristics on the MQ-25A, which would have been useful in tasking the plane to act as a naval strike fighter, in favor of building a drone to function simply as a flying gas station, refueling Navy F-A-18S and F-35C fighters to do the striking on their own, sans stealth. Playing the good soldier, Northrop appears willing to go alone with this plan. After reviewing photos of the company's offering, Aviation Week reports that Northrop has appended to X-47B1 very unstealthy drop fuel tank, basically a gas can that can be jettisoned when empty, and one air refueling pod beneath the airplane's wings, ruining the aircraft's sleek radar profile, but giving it the ability to refuel other planes in flight. Presumably, and hopefully, this inelegant design doesn't represent how the final configuration for how X-47B will look when Northrop offers it to become the Navy's new MQ-25A. But for now, it permits Northrop to resume flying X-47B as a test bed while refining its design for the Navy's eventual official request for proposals, due later this year. Meanwhile, brief glimpses of what Lockheed Martin and Boeing are offering don't seem much better, from a stealth perspective. From the little we've seen, both Lockheed and Boeing are eschewing stealth and working on traditional shaped aircraft designs, with radar clogging, wing-mounted fuel pods attached. The fourth company in the running, General Atomics, is believed to be doing something similar, probably using a Sea Avenger drone as its prototype and probably affixing fuel pods to its wings as well. All of these designs are of course subject to change, and it's unlikely any of the four companies will finalize their designs before seeing the final, official, Navy request for proposals, due out later this year. Once it's been issued, and the companies have submitted their bids, the Navy will study bottom, perhaps to avoid sea spray from being sucked into the engine at very low altitude. It is also painted in blue Chinese Navy camouflage. Most modern cruise missiles are what are called sea skimmers, flying 30 feet or less above the surface of the water in order to avoid detection. The curvature of the Earth means sea skimming shortens the distance that enemy ship radars can detect it, giving the defender less time to shoot it down. The new unnamed drone, by comparison, is claimed to fly just 18 inches above the surface of the water. Against typical sea skimmers, a ship radar 30 feet above sea level would detect the incoming missile at 15.4 miles. The same radar would only detect the Chinese drone at 9.48 miles. A drone flying that close to the ground won't be flying supersonic, and by appearances the F has a turbofan engine. Assuming a speed of 600 miles an hour, typical for subsonic anti-ship missiles, an enemy ship would have 59 seconds to react. The drone can fly this low thanks to the ground effect principle, which takes place when very low flying aircraft experience more lift and less drag due to the presence of the ground underneath. The ground blocks the trailing vortices of the wing and decreases downwash. Further evidence that the drone takes advantage of ground effect is its low wing design, where the wing root is at the bottom of the fuselage, a common feature among ground effect vehicles. The drone has an estimated flying time of 1.5 hours, which at 600 miles an hour would give it a 900 mile range. It has a maximum takeoff weight of 6,000 pounds and a maximum payload, likely a blast fragmentation warhead, of 2,000 pounds. That's the average size of warheads the Soviet Union their surrounding environment while in transit, Robert Britzlerer, program manager. 
sea platforms and weapons. During a recent swarm boat demonstration in the lower Chesapeake Bay, ONR developed boats achieved a key milestone in the area of autonomous control. Unlike purely remote controlled boats, these boats are able to perceive their environment and plan their routes without human intervention. The role of the human is supervisory control, Britzler said. A human at a control station, using a low bandwidth connection, can perform command and control functions without needing to actually drive the vessels. The demonstration used four USVs, working in tandem to perform a range of potential maritime combat operations. All four of the boats were able to see and sense a common picture for route planning, hazard avoidance and collision prevention, developers said. We are using a first-of-its-kind sophisticated perception engine which senses the presence of other vessels using a combination of sensors, radar, cameras and processing algorithms. Britzler explained. The ONR demonstration used 7 to 11 meter boats already in the Navy inventory as manned boats, and configured them with an autonomy kit enabling a range of unmanned mission possibilities. The kits, called Control Architecture for Robotic Agent Command and Sensing, or Caracas, are engineered to provide USVs with an ability to handle dynamic operational situations. This can include the execution of search patterns, harbor defenses, surveillance or even swarm boat attacks. Other possibilities among a wide range of uses include using autonomous USVs for supply and weapons transport, counterman operations, electronic warfare and amphibious operations. The USVs are programmed with sensors linked to an established database of known threats such as enemy boats. They are also linked to one another with an ability to detect, track and trail unknown boats. Britzler said, ONR is working closely with the Pentagon's Once Secret Strategic Capabilities Office, or SCO, in an effort to fast track this technology into operational service. The Strategic Capabilities Office is a special DoD level effort to harness, leverage, and integrate near term emerging technology for faster delivery to combatant commanders at war. Much of this involves merging new platforms, weapons and technologies with existing systems in a manner that both improves capability while circumventing a lengthy and often bureaucratic formal acquisition process, Dr. William Roper, SCO director, told a small group of reporters. A key advantage of using remotely controlled drone ships is that, quite naturally, they can save sailors and marines from being exposed to enemy fire during an attack operation. In fact, Roper maintained that USV autonomy brings the potential of substantially advancing amphibious warfare tactics. This can greatly help expeditionary logistics for a ship that is standing off from the shore. Instead of having to use an amphib manned by a lot of people, you have an unmanned supply boat, Roper explained. Fast-moving USVs could indeed lower risk and increase efficiency for a large number of missions, to include intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, ISR, counterman operations, search and rescue, electronic warfare, supply and weapons transport and amphibious assaults. Higher tech enemy sensors and longer range surface and land fired weapons have drastically increased the vulnerability of approaching amphibious assault operations, making them more susceptible to enemy fire. As a result, the Navy and Marines have been evolving amphibious tactics to include more disaggregated approaches designed to spread out an approaching force, making it more difficult for enemy weapons to attack an advancing assault. For example, the IOG attack in the Pacific during WI, an historic amphibious assault, involved a group of Marines approaching enemy shores in close proximity to one another, weapons, Marines, equipment and attacking infantry all came ashore in rapid succession. Modern threats, are changing amphibious tactics to succeed against high attack more lethal enemy weapons. Instead of having to land as a single unit, they can now break out. There is safety in numbers and they can redistribute, Roper explained. When it comes to offensive surface operations, unmanned boats could form a swarming of small attack craft designed to overwhelm and destroy enemy ships with gunfire, explosives or even small missiles. 
Roper explained that this strategic and tactical trajectory is greatly enhanced by the possible use of USVs. The Navy's current inventory includes ship-to-shore amphibious craft called landing craft air cushions, hookacks, and landing craft utility vehicles, LCUs, these platforms, now being upgraded by newer transport boats able to move faster and carry more payload, such as Abrams tanks, are manned and therefore involve the use of a crew. LCACs require a crew of 13, and LCACs use a crew of 5. New high-tech LCAC replacements, called ship-to-shore connectors, are already being developed and delivered to the Navy by Textron. The Navy and ONR are already immersed in the development of a variety of USVs, including a mine-detecting unmanned influence sweep system, or UIS, for the literal combat ship. The UIS is carried by a Textron-developed Common Unmanned Surface Vehicle, or CUSF. The CUSF, in development since before 2009, can travel for more than 20 hours carrying up to 4,000 pounds at speeds of up to 20 knots, Textron information states. Also, it is engineered to withstand waves up to 20 feet. The US is engineered to find and detonate undersea mines in order to save sailors and manned vessels from a potentially deadly explosion. The Navy's UISS will be towed behind the unmanned vehicle and will emit sounds and magnetic signatures that mimic a ship, setting off nearby mines that listen for passing ships, according to a report from the U.S. Naval Institute. The Navy is also advancing its recently christened Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA, inspired submarine hunting unmanned ship called Sea Hunter. The ship is built to travel up to 10,000 miles while using sonar and other sensors to locate enemy submarines. A high-frequency sonar will send acoustic pings into the ocean before analyzing the return signal to determine the nature of dollars and, quite possibly, increased precision, service officials have explained. For instance, a key advantage of using laser weapons would include an ability to melt or incinerate an incoming missile or enemy target without necessarily causing an explosion. This would be of particular relevance, for example, in air attacks such as the current campaign against ISIS over Iraq and Syria. ISIS fighters are known to deliberately blend in among civilians, therefore making it difficult to pinpoint enemy targets without endangering innocent civilians. Precision attacks without an explosion, therefore, would provide a useful additional tactical option. Zacharias said laser-armed drones could likely provide an impactful part of a non-move arsenal of weapons. You might want to put lasers on board so you have a distributed package when you have a bunch of different platforms carrying different parts of weapons, sensors and even fuel in one very expensive fighter package. It is like having distributed satellite. You could have distributed fighter packages as well, Zacharias said. Firing laser weapons would certainly provide a different option than a 100-pound, explosive, tank and building killing hellfire missile. Although firing lasers from drones is expected to be more complicated than arming fighter jets or aircraft with lasers, the existing development of laser weapon technology is quite likely to inform drone laser development as well. Ground testing of a laser weapon called the High Energy Laser, or HAL, has been underway at White Sands Missile Range, NM, service officials said. The High Energy Laser test is being conducted by the Air Force Directed Energy Directorate, Kirtland AFB, New Mexico. The first airborne tests are expected to take place by 2021, Air Force officials have said. The developmental efforts are focused on increasing the power, precision and guidance of existing laser weapon applications with the hope of moving from 10 kilowatts up to 100 kilowatts, Air Force leaders said. Air Force weapons developers are also working on the guidance mechanisms to enable laser weapons to stay on track on a particular target. Air Force leaders have said that the service plans to begin firing laser weapons from larger platforms such as C-17S and C-130S until the technological miniaturization efforts can configure the weapon to fire from fighter jets will soon have the ability to find, acquire, track and destroy an enemy target using sensors, 
targeting and weapons delivery systems, without needing any human intervention. While that technology is fast developing, if not already here, the Pentagon operates under and established autonomous weapons systems doctrine requiring a man in the loop when it comes to decisions about the use of lethal force, Zakaria Zix. Meanwhile, the Scan Eagle became one of the first UFs to get hooked by the Federal Aviation Administration to fly in U.S. airspace for commercial purposes. With these milestones complete, it's time to sell the product. The company is on the scene in Paris on an international marketing mission to make these military favorites even more common over royal fields, scientific expeditions and civilian cargo ships. San Diego-based Kratos Defense and Security will officially unveil a new class of unmanned aerial systems that represent the future of air combat at the 2017 Paris Air Show. That's a bold statement, but the drone the firm is offering, the XQ-222 Valkyrie, symbolizes the way that future drones are going to increase the lethality of other airplanes. Once launched from an aircraft, these 30-foot drones could deliver surveillance equipment or lethal munitions to the most dangerous parts of the battlefield. Essentially, the company is marketing them as fully functional unmanned jet fighters. One key limitation of these kinds of drones has been range and reusability, but the company has made strides to solve these. The Valkyrie has a range of more than 3,000 nautical miles, enabling it to fly a mission with an F-22 or F-35 and return home to be reused. And with a cost of just $3 million per aircraft, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't make it back. A Tomahawk missile costs $2.3 million a pop, and they go on one-way trips. The first flight of the Valkyrie is planned for 2018, but the time to start selling it is apparently now. For unmanned aircraft to truly fit in on naval ships, they need to operate on the same fuel the other aircraft does. This Swiss company, a well-heeled joint venture between Saab and a UA firm, is billing the Skelda V200 unmanned rotorcraft as the only heavy fuel you as currently on the market. It used JP-8 jet fuel, the same stuff that runs all of NATO's aircraft and the most common jet fuel in the world. Their system has seen some real-world use hunting pirates from Spanish ships. The company is touting big contract announcements for this year's air show presaging a future for these things buzzing illegal fishing boats, scrying the snorkels of Russian submarines, and tracking pirate scows. Last March, France and the UK announced a new $2.19 billion project to create new military drones. In 2017, the joint group of European aerospace companies will prepare for the full-scale development of unmanned combat air system, UCAS operational demonstrators by 2025. The 2017 air show, then, is a chance to reassure everyone with a stake that progress is happening. That has already led to press conferences with Frank Lejeune, the head of the defense division at the French Aerospace Research Center. He says the goal is to build radar evading UFs that could see action by 2030. The program seeks to build the most stealthy drone possible, he said, describing stealth as the most important factor in survivability. Drones and missiles are becoming a case of convergent evolution. It's getting